I guess you might say I'm a lucky man. My name is Paul, and I have a runner's body which has stayed with me since college. That's how I got to college in the first place. I was good at running the hurdles and even better at the sprint races. If it was a mile or less, I was your man. At least I was good enough to get an athletic scholarship. I even got to try out for the Olympics, but I was 0.04 seconds too slow. I didn't have a specific major because I had no special interest, so I settled for a general studies degree. While that was going on, I received a master's degree in S education. I had the looks to go with my body, and I took full advantage of it. Girls were easy and most of them were excellent teachers in the art of making love. I learned more about S during those four years than most men learn in a lifetime. I got lucky after graduation and was offered a job by an electrical wholesale company. The main office and warehouse was in Central City. We had four satellite warehouse outlets in each of the four directions, about four hours away by car. They were North City, South City, East City, and West City, as my boss liked to call them. Part of my job was to visit each satellite store every fourth week. The owner believed in hands-on supervision and wouldn't let me use the computer or the telephone as a substitute for face-to-face -face meetings. I would leave early every Thursday morning for one of our stores, arrive about noon, review their inventory, and check on any problems they might have. I would stay overnight at a good motel or hotel, check back in with the store for a couple of hours Friday morning, and then drive home. The boss provided me with a nice car, and he didn't complain about my expense account. I met Gail at our first company picnic. She was attending a family reunion that was holding a picnic at the same park. She was beautiful. No, she was more than beautiful. She was exquisite. You could see her in a bikini at the swimming pool and still be suffering from wet dreams about her a week later. We introduced ourselves and sat on a bench to talk. Well, I think she was interested in talking. I was interested in something else, but not in public. We talked for about 30 minutes and I realized two things. She had the most desirable body I had ever seen. Her fine blonde hair was done up in a ponytail, and it went down to well below her shoulder blades. That was the problem. She was blonde. The creators of every blonde joke ever told or written must have had her in mind. No wonder she was 23 years old and still single. As far as I could tell, she didn't even have a boyfriend. I was only a year older than her but light years ahead of her on the intelligence meter. We exchanged phone numbers, and I called her the next day. We made a date for the next Friday night, but that turned out to be a complete waste of time for me. I took her to a nice place to eat, and we danced afterward. Actually, she was light years ahead of me when it came to dancing. Rule number one was that you don't look like you're making love when on the dance floor. We could keep an inch or so between us, or we could sit down. I found out about rule number two when I took her home. I got a kiss on the cheek, but I didn't get invited in. Okay, there was always date number two. Date number two was exactly the same as date number one. Date numbers three, four, and five ended the same way. Back in college, I always scored by the second date. Considering I wasn't getting anywhere with her, I started teasing her. What the hell, why not? I would be moving on before long anyway. She was so dumb that she would laugh right along with me, never realizing that I was making fun of her. Dumb blonde. We dated a few more times, and I continued to make fun of her. She never knew the difference. Of course, I never saw the inside of her apartment either. By the time I decided to move on, it was too late. I had become obsessed with her. I wanted what I couldn't have. I had never been turned down like this before. I made up my mind that I wouldn't give up until I had her. Marriage was no problem. There was always divorce if it didn't work out. She was a V, something I had never experienced before. Out of the numerous women I had enjoyed, that simple pleasure had escaped me. If I had to marry her to claim her V, fine. Her complete lack of experience would definitely work to my advantage. It would be fun teaching her. I wouldn't have to worry about her comparing me to some former lover. Marriage seemed like the best way to get exactly what I wanted. I had heard that a girl became totally devoted to the man that took her cherry. That, plus her marriage vows, would make her mine and mine alone. That's what I wanted. Complete loyalty. Was I in love? I doubt it. Besides, love is for romantics and fools. I did want her though. She would probably loosen up once we were engaged. I reserved a table at the very best restaurant in town for our next date, and we had a perfect candlelight dinner. She accepted the engagement ring with a close hug and an intimate kiss. 
That got me through the front door and all the way to the couch. We were sitting close, and I started to put my hand down her blouse. We hadn't set a date to get married. I was thinking along the lines of a year or so, but when she said that, I moved the timetable up to as soon as possible. We compromised on two months. She wanted a nice church wedding, and it would take that long to make all of the arrangements. As for the honeymoon, well, I'm not sure that there are enough descriptive words of the right kind to properly describe it. Heavenly bliss is as close as I can come. Yes, she was a V, and she was as dumb about S as the proverbial doornail. That didn't slow her down one bit. She was a very fast, energetic learner. The instant she said, I do, all, and I do mean all of the barriers came down. The only place she drew the line was about, well you know, she had heard about it and decided against it long before she met me. Although I had tried it with other girls, I agreed with her. We went out dancing the second night and she was crawling all over me. She felt me hesitate and whispered that we were married now and we would damn well dance any way we wanted to. Things continued to go well after our honeymoon. We found a nice three-bedroom house at the end of a dead-end road. It was kind of isolated, but we liked that. I made enough money that she didn't have to work if she didn't want to. She had been doing a little bit of freelance writing before we were married, and she wanted to pursue it. She already had a small business account set up that had a few hundred dollars in it. That was fine with me. That meant she would be home every evening when I got off from work, and we could continue to explore each other in detail. The first thing she did was to buy the best PC available, along with a scanner and color laser jet printer. She set up an office in one of the spare bedrooms. Well, I called it an office. She called it her inspirational creativity room. The second thing to go into the room was a fancy surround sound stereo system. She then bought a lot of CDs with stupid names like Tchaikovsky and Bach. She called these things her creative audio ambience. Dumb blonde. That brings me to my problem. I married a dumb blonde. I will say one thing though. She has never turned me down in bed. If anything, she will initiate S if I don't. The problem is, she has been initiating S with at least four other guys for the past five weeks that I know about. Three years of a perfect marriage, and then it goes to hell. Dumb blonde. I must say that I have made it easy for her. I leave home every Thursday morning and don't get back until late Friday afternoon. That gives her a lot of time to F around every week with little chance of getting caught. Anyhow, that's probably what she thought. Dumb blonde. I took her to the adult toy store not long after we were married, and we selected several different kinds that we thought she might like. I figured she would play with those if she got horny while I was gone. I think she did that until about five or six weeks ago. Then she had to go and find several rail, live D to play with. Dumb blonde. I found out about her games by accident. Gail and her date went into a bar that is owned by a close friend of mine. She was there on a Thursday evening, and I knew about it within minutes. After all, what are close friends and cell phones for? My friend didn't see anything bad going on, but Gail and her companion did sit rather close together. They were there for about an hour and then left holding hands. Dumb blonde. To say that I was surprised would be a gross understatement. I just couldn't, or at least I wouldn't, believe that she would cheat on me. RS life was good and she was always telling me how much she loved me. We were even thinking about her going off of her birth control pills and starting a family. Well, at least we didn't have to worry about kids, and I knew that she was still on her pills this month. She always took them the first thing every morning, and I was usually in the bathroom when she did. I hurried through my work Friday morning and returned home by early afternoon. I went to the bar and talked to my friend. I got a blow-by-blow -blow account of exactly what happened. They didn't do any kissing, and their hands remained above the table all while they were there. It didn't seem too bad, but my friend thought I should do some serious investigation to be sure that nothing was going on. Being a bar owner, my friend knew exactly who to call. His name was Max Cook, and his card was tacked to the corkboard at the end of the bar. Yep, he was the guy to go to all right. He was the only detective agency in town that took on cheating spouse cases. I called Max and he said he wasn't busy and to come on by. Max had a nice office. He greeted me warmly, and I explained my suspicions. He said he was working on another case right now, but it should be all wrapped up by Tuesday of next week. I wasn't going to need him before Thursday, so it looked like everything was going to work out fine. I made arrangements to leave a picture of Gail along with a description and the license number of her car with his secretary Monday morning. Things continued to go very well at home, 
and Gail about wore me out in bed. I left bright and early Thursday morning. I didn't get an hour's sleep that night because I was worried about what Max would find out. All of my worries and lack of sleep paid off. I met with Max late Friday afternoon, and he had bad news. Some guy arrived at my house about noon Thursday. He and Gail left about 6 to go eat and returned about 9. He didn't leave our home until noon the next day. Max had some nice pictures he took with a zoom lens. I recognized the bastard immediately. It was Adam, one of her friends from church. He was a deacon and was supposed to be happily married. Well, I had her now. Dumb blonde. Max thought we should get some audio, video recordings of them doing the dirty. I knew that Gail would be visiting her parents Sunday afternoon, so I told him to come by about 2 o'clock. Gail tried to F my brains out all weekend. I couldn't say no to sleeping with her because I didn't want to make her suspicious, but I wasn't about to make love with her. That's when I decided to be too tired, or to have a headache. If she could pretend that she wasn't F another man, then even though I didn't want to, so could I. Dumb blonde. Gail left at half past one and Max arrived at two o'clock. He hid several cameras around the house, and we hid the recorders in the attic. It took less than three hours. Max left about five, and Gail got home about six. It worked out perfectly. Dumb blonde. Adam didn't show up next Thursday. It was Brian. It was almost too much to take. Brian was our insurance agent. He was supposed to be happily married, too. Max and I talked it over, and we decided to keep watching and see if anyone else was involved. Gail continued to demand that I let her try to F my brains out, and I continued to have headaches. Considering whom she had been F so far, I figured I was reasonably safe from STDs, but she was F someone else now, and I wasn't going to have anything to do with her. Dumb blonde. I left the next Thursday wondering who the lucky bastard was going to be that night. Last week's videos were good, too good in fact. They used the couch, the kitchen table, the weight bench in the basement, and the spare bedroom. The weight bench was a surprise. I hadn't F her there yet, but only because I hadn't thought of it. Dumb blonde. Max didn't disappoint me Friday afternoon. Craig sure did though. He showed up right on time at noon Thursday. This bastard managed the gun club where we shot. Gail liked to shoot her 22 and 9mm. I liked to shoot my 40S and W and 45 Colt Auto. This was the son of a bee that gave her shooting lessons, and now she was giving him F lessons. The living room tape showed her sitting on the edge of the couch teaching him. I guess that's what she was doing because she kept giving him directions. Craig was younger than us and had only been married for about 6 months. That was a marriage that wouldn't last long. Dumb blonde. She wanted to make love that night, but I rolled over and went asleep. Max and I had enough evidence now that I didn't have to pretend any longer. I wouldn't be F her again for the rest of her life. I was ready to hunt up a lawyer and start divorce proceedings. Max talked me out of it for a week or so. He thought I should wait and see just how many men she was with. As he put it, the more evidence we had, the larger the percentage of our property that would be mine in the settlement. Dumb blonde. I never touched her all week and she was starting to look really frustrated. I'd have been willing to bet that whoever walked through the door at noon Thursday would be R before the door was all of the way closed. Horny dumb blonde. I wasn't wrong. Dan was on time. This was her hairdresser. I knew the bastard was married, but I always thought he liked men. She met him naked and dragged him to the couch. She was laying back, both hands gripping his head and screaming for him. Max busted out laughing. When he was able to talk, he pointed out the length of Danny Boy's tongue. Damn, how was he able to keep all of that in his mouth? He had the longest tongue I had ever seen. That got another burst of laughter from Max he saw size of something else. Max was just about on the floor by now. After they finished Gail helped him onto the couch. We agreed to wait one more week to see who else would show up. At this point, I wouldn't have been surprised if Saint Nick himself would have parked his sleigh on the roof and slid down the chimney. He might as well get his share, because everyone else was. Dumb blonde. I didn't touch her all week, and I wouldn't let her seduce me. By the time Thursday morning arrived, she was so that her eyes were blazing. I think she had burned the motors out of all toys by Wednesday evening. Dumb blonde. I left with a smile because if everything went right, I would confront her Friday evening and move her out of the house Saturday. I had it all set up for divorce papers to be delivered the first thing Saturday morning. Max agreed to get there right after the papers were delivered. 
I figured that I had better have him there to be sure she didn't try to do something stupid. He would be a good witness for me. Dumb blonde. My boss had mentioned that he was going to replace the manager at the East store and wanted to know if I was interested in the job. It would be a nice increase in salary for me, but I would have to move to that town. I had told Gail about it just before this mess started, and she had seemed interested. Considering whom all she had been F, I had no desire to remain here. The only thing was I would be going by myself. I wasn't about to take her with me now. Dumb blonde. Max had everything ready for me when I arrived at his office late Friday afternoon. It was Adam, the self-righteous deacon again. We got some good video this time. The only place they didn't F or S was in the master bedroom. They went at it like two rabbits on speed. Dumb blonde. Max made three good pictures off of each one of the tapes and put them in an envelope for me. He arranged them in the exact order that I wanted. I was ready to confront her now, and I was a happy camper when I walked through the front door. She caught me before I got to the kitchen, smiling brightly and with a gleam in her eye. Iune. Welcome home. Wanna get with me? She said as she tried to throw her arms around me. Damn. She's been F Adam's brains out, what there were of them, for two days, and she still wants more. I wondered if it was possible for her to ever get enough? No thanks. I do think we need to talk though. Come on into the kitchen. I managed to disengage from her and led her to the kitchen table. I must say that she had a nice dress on. It came almost down to her knees and the top was so tight that it was obvious she didn't have underwear on. I was even a gentleman and seated her at one side of the table. I sat down on the other side and started talking. Gail, our marriage is in trouble. As a matter of fact, I think it's over. However, I'm going to give you a chance to explain. Would you please tell me why you are having an affair with Adam? I placed the first three pictures on the table in front of her. Her eyes brightened up as she carefully studied each picture. Hmm, that was yesterday afternoon and again this morning. We had a real good time, dear. His face twisted up in the cutest way. He's really pretty good. Once I taught him a few things, but I think you're better. Damn. I'm asking for an explanation and all she's doing is bragging about it. I knew she was dumb, but damn. She surely can't be that dumb, can she? Damn it, Gail. You're married. To me. You aren't supposed to be F other men. Really? I didn't think you would mind. It was just S, honey. It didn't mean anything. We were just having a little fun. It's you that I love. I don't understand, Gail. If you love me, why were you F him? Well, we were talking at the church picnic, and the subject of our spouses came up. Did you know that until he and I got together, he had only done it in one style? His wife is so hung up about S that she thinks you should only do it if you want to make a baby. They don't even sleep in the same bed. They have twin beds. I felt real sorry for him so I invited him over. I didn't think you would mind, honey. It was only it. You mean to tell me that the only reason you F him is because you felt sorry for him? Of course, dear. What other reason would I have? He's a friend, but it's you that I love. All I did was show him what it felt like to F in a whole bunch of different positions. It ended up feeling good for both of us. What's wrong with that? You were out of town so you didn't miss out on anything. I was horny, you were gone, and he was curious. I think it all worked out real well. I didn't know what to say. There weren't any courses on dumb blondes in college, at least none that I knew about. All I could do was sit there and look at her. She was sitting there looking at the pictures. Dumb blonde. Maybe if I moved on. What about Brian? I said as I laid three more pictures on the table. Her eyes brightened up again and the corners of her mouth turned up into a wishful smile. I had no idea what she might be thinking. I had expected her to say that she was sorry. I thought that she might even beg me to forgive her. It was beginning to look like none of that was going to happen. Dumb. Dumb blonde. So, what about Brian? I asked him to come over because I thought I might need extra insurance for my computer and stereo equipment. We got to talking, and one thing led to another, and the next thing I knew he effed me. That's me as this picture was taken. He'll be here next Thursday about noon, but that's all right because you'll be gone on your trip. You just don't get it, do you, Gail? We're married. That's supposed to mean something. The only one you're supposed to be F is me, damn it. But I do it with you, Paul. I F you every chance I get. We do it every day. But you aren't here on Thursdays. You're a couple of hundred miles away, for all night. I only want to have a little fun. Why should you care if you aren't here? 
I didn't have a clue as to what to say or do next. She wasn't denying a damn thing and worse yet. All she's done is tell me how much fun it is. For lack of not knowing what else to do, I laid the next three pictures out. Would you mind explaining what it is that's so special about Craig? Please? I know this is very difficult for you. Take your time. I wouldn't want you to have a nervous breakdown or something. Oh, you're being silly again. Craig was standing behind me at the range, and he was showing me the proper way to point my pistol. I could feel him pushing it against me. I felt so sorry for him. I mean, it was kind of my fault. If I hadn't asked him to help me, he wouldn't have gotten in that condition. I couldn't leave him to suffer like that so we went into his office, and I took care of his problem. He was so grateful, and he wanted to return my favor, so I brought him home with me. I thought you liked Craig. You're always joking with him and all. That may be, but I certainly don't want him f my wife. He should be home with his own wife. Oh honey, he's so young and inexperienced. He's only been married for a few months. Someone needs to teach him so that he can be a better to his wife. I'm just doing him a favor. He's going to bring his wife with him next time, so that I can teach the two of them together. I don't know anything about it with another girl. Is there some book at the library that I can check out and read? Yes, it's in the infidelity section. The title is, How to F Up Your Marriage Without Really Trying, and then you should read Divorce. The final option, next. Oh you, you're being silly again. Hey, I'm thirsty, how about a beer? She bounced out of her chair. She handed me my beer and sat back down asking, Got any more good pictures? She reached across the table, grabbed the envelope, and turned it upside down. The last three pictures fell out face down. She turned the top one over and, Oh my, this is Dan and me. He's the best. Oh boy, this is a good one, she said as she turned the next picture over. You know, once I taught him how to use it, he could send me all of the way to heaven. What's this last picture? Wow got any more pictures? Her eyes were blazing. Her left elbow was on the table, and she was circling. Holy s Gale. You're playing, aren't you? I can't help it, Paul. All of these pictures are so good. You haven't touched me for over four weeks. Take me to bed, please. I couldn't believe this dumb bee. I've accused her of cheating on me and told her that divorce was on the horizon, and she wants to get off. Well, f this. Please, honey, please. I love you. Only you. It was only S with them, honey. It's you that I love. Let's go to bed. I promise I'll make you feel good. To hell with you, Gail. I don't want anything to do with you anymore. Go use one of your. Hell, you can use M all at once for all I care. I can't. They're all worn out. They won't work anymore. I'm finishing. She did. What in the hell was wrong with this bee? Was nymphomania a disease that a woman could catch? Was she mentally off of her rocker? I'm out of here, you dumb bee. You're nothing but A.S. and A.W. I want nothing more to do with you. I got up and started for the door. Oh, honey. Please, honey. I love you, Paul. I just walked right on out the door. I didn't even bother to take the pictures with me. Max had everything I needed. My friend that owned the bar lived on the floor above it, and I would stay there tonight. Gail could have the whole damn house to herself. I would have her out on the street tomorrow. Dumb F blonde. I guess you could say I'm not a lucky woman. My name is Gail, and I've been told that I have a perfect body. I was a beautiful baby at birth, a delightful child at age 2, and a charming little girl at age 5. Then I was an angelic little darling at age 10, a lovely young lady at age 15, and a stunning young woman at age 20. I am now a radiantly alluring married lady at age 26. I think I could be dressed in baggy coveralls, covered with mud from head to toe, and some guy would nudge his buddy and say, hey dude, check her out. In some ways, I'm pretty smart. Most guys seem to think that I'm blonde and beautiful and dumb. I gave up trying to convince them differently years ago. I met Paul, my husband, about three and a half years ago. I fell in love with him, and we got married. He's very good looking and reasonably smart. He likes to tease me about being a dumb blonde but I just laugh along with him because I know that he doesn't really mean anything by it. At least, I thought he didn't. I'm not so sure now. I think my marriage is over, and I don't have anyone but myself to blame. I have had four different lovers in the past five weeks. Paul leaves early every Thursday morning to visit one of his employer's four satellite stores. He stays overnight and returns late on Friday afternoon. 
that gave me a 24-hour window in which to experiment and experience what it was like to have a different lover. Paul found out what I was doing and really raised hell with me last night. He had pictures of me with all four men. He was very upset that I had cheated on him, and he's demanding a divorce. He was so mad that he went somewhere else to sleep last night. He says that the divorce papers will be served at 8 o'clock this morning, and then he's going to move me out of our home. Well, it's 8.30 and the papers aren't here yet, but I just heard his truck stop in the drive. Paul came in through the front door and found me sitting at the kitchen table. I looked up at him over my coffee cup and said, E. Une. I'm glad you're home. I'm sure you are. Well, I'm home to stay but you're leaving today. Get your stuff packed and in the truck. I'll take you wherever you want to go. But, dear, I just don't understand why I have to leave. Because, you dumb blonde, you've been sleeping with other men. You've broken our marriage vows. There's no way that I'll have anything to do with a woman that does that. Didn't you read the papers that were delivered this morning? What papers, honey? The divorce papers, you idiot. I'm sorry, honey, but no one has been here this morning but you. He was really starting to look confused. The papers were supposed to be here at 8 o'clock, but it was about 8.45 now. He had to be wondering what had gone wrong. He kept looking through the dining room at the front door, like he was expecting something or someone. He must be psychic because the doorbell made its irritating buzz at that moment. He jumped up out of his chair and made a dash for the door. There was some anxious whispering, and then he returned to the kitchen with a rather large man. This is Max Cook, my private investigator. He's here to be sure that you don't do something stupid. He's also here to see to it that you leave today, just like the divorce papers say. But dear, there aren't any papers. Now why don't you fix Mr. Cook a nice little drink? and we can sit here and talk about your nice little problem. The envelope he brought the pictures in yesterday was lying on the counter behind me. I reached back and laid it on the table in front of me. Paul just rolled his eyes and gave Mr. Cook his best. What's this dumb blonde going to do next? Look, look, you dumb. I don't have a problem. You're the one with the problems. You've been sleeping with other men for at least the last five Thursdays. You have been unfaithful. You've broken our marriage vows. I'm kicking you out and divorcing you. Like I said before, I won't have anything to do with an unfaithful bee. I removed the first few pictures from the envelope and spread them out on the table in front of Paul and Mr. Cook and asked, Do you suppose Anne's husband feels the same way about and as you do about me? You just said you wouldn't have anything to do with an unfaithful bee, but you're F her every Thursday night that you're in North City. Are you telling me that it's okay for her to be unfaithful, but not me? Holy, where did you get those? Damn you, you had no right. I'll fix you, so help me. He started to get out of his chair, but Mr. Cook grabbed him by his arm and told him to sit down and calm down. Notice the date on the first one, dear. That was your first trip to North City after our honeymoon, wasn't it? It didn't take you very long to break our vows, did it? I turned the envelope upside down and 20 more pictures fell out onto the table. I didn't give him time to say anything. What was I doing wrong, Paul? Look at the one of and with you. Is she better at that than I am? Here, check them all out. I've got several of you and Beth over in East City. Here's some of you and Connie in South City. Oh, and let's not forget D and in West City. It looks to me like you're F a lot of unfaithful B. Well, I think it's your turn to explain now. What have you got to say for yourself? I don't have to explain a damn thing. I'm the man of this house, damn it. It's a man's nature to want a little variety once in a while. It's the woman's place to stay home and be faithful for her man. You're the one that invited other men into our home. You're the one that defiled our marriage bed. You're the... You just stop right there, Paul. Not once did I have it with any of them in our marriage bed. It may have been everywhere else in the house, but not there. You still don't get it, do you? You're married to me. That means that you belong to me and me only. To put it in terms that your dumb blonde little head just might understand. You don't F anybody but me, period. Oh, so what you're telling me is that I can't be with anyone else, but it's okay for you to sleep with other unfaithful women when you're out of town. Have I got it right now? Exactly. I don't understand. If I have to remain faithful, then why don't you? That's different. I'm the man of this house. You will do as I say, and I will do as I want. That's a man's right. 
Well, Paul, I won't agree to that. If you can sleep with other women, then I'm going to sleep with other men. Damn, Gail. You keep talking like you're going to be living in this house tomorrow. Get it through your blonde head that we're through, period. You're moving out today. I don't think so, Paul. If anyone leaves today, it will be you. I have put up with your insults and humiliation for our entire marriage. I realized that you were working under a lot of pressure at work, and if letting you make fun of me helped you to deal with it, then I was willing to do it. I love you, and I will do anything for you. I watched you flirt with other women when we went out dancing, but that made no difference to me because I loved you. You made no secret about having experienced several women before you met me. You've even bragged about it to other guys in my presence. I didn't care because I loved you. I knew about you sleeping with, and the first week after we got back from our honeymoon. That hurt me real bad, but I loved you. I almost lost my mind when I found out that you were with a different woman every Thursday night, but my love for you gave me strength. I was sure that you would get tired of them, but you didn't. Then you scared me. You wanted us to start having kids. The first issue was that you have been with a lot of different women. I had never been with anyone but you. The second issue was wondering what kind of a father you would be. I decided to take care of both issues at the same time. I carefully chose four men to have it with. All of them have made it known that with a few changes on your part, we would be welcome in their little group. I was honest with them. I told them that you were the only man I had ever been with and that I wanted to know what it would be like to have it with someone else. I also told them I was going to fix it so that you would find out about it. Each of their wives was present when I made my offer and they agreed to it. It wasn't revenge, Paul. I felt that in order to understand you better, I should do as you were doing. You know, walk a mile in your shoes, so to speak. You were seeing other women, and I wanted to know what it would be like to be with other men. Did I enjoy it? Yes, I did, very much so. Were they any better than you? No, just different. However, you're the one I love. It's you I want in my bed, just you. By the way, Paul, how did you like my little performance yesterday? I tried my very best to be the perfect little dumb blonde that you so love to humiliate and make fun of. Do you know what really hurts, Paul? In spite of the way you treat me, in spite of the other women, in spite of several other problems we haven't talked about yet, I still love you. Now, I'm going to deal with the second issue. There have to be some changes made if we are going to have kids. Paul, I want you to know that I still love you dearly. That being said, you now have to choose one of four options. Option 1. We start having an open marriage. There is a SW group of about 25 couples that I know about. They have a large party once a month and most of them get together in smaller groups several times a month. They freely have dates with each other's spouses. No one dates anyone outside of the group. If you really have to have a variety of women, a club with 25 available females and it should be enough for you. You just remember that there will be 25 available males for me to play with. One of the couples owns a clinic that deals with infections and diseases. New couples have to go through a six-month screening process. That means you are tested once a month for six months. The testing continues on a monthly basis for as long as you are members. If you are caught dating someone outside of the group, you are discharged from the group immediately. They will occasionally make an exception, but it has to be voted on by the whole group. They made one for me, but I had to be examined and tested by the doctors at their clinic. Option 2. We continue like we are. You sneak around with other women, and I will sneak around with other men. It will be just like in the military, we won't ask, and we won't tell. Option 3. We forgive each other for all past indiscretions, and start living as a married couple should. To put it in your language, you won't F anyone but me, and I won't F anyone but you. This is the option that I hope with all of my heart you choose. With this option, we can start a family. Option 4. We get a divorce. We split everything down the middle. You go your way, and I'll go my way. Well, what's it going to be, Paul? Paul just sat there, staring at something on the wall behind me. I never have been very good at reading people's faces or guessing what they were thinking. Oh, God. Please let him choose me and the family that we can have. I do love him so much. Are you through blabbering now? If you are, pack your ass and get out. So, I have lost him. He couldn't have hurt me more if he had stuck a knife in me and twisted it. My love wasn't strong enough to hold him. I would be divorced and lonely now. I've done everything I can think of to prove that I can be any type of woman he wants. 
If I had only done something different, but what? All that was left now was to salvage as much as possible. Paul, it is you that will be leaving. Pack your clothes and leave, please. You're not only dumb, you're crazy. So what if you have a few pictures? I've got pictures, too. The worst the court would do is split everything 50 50 -ths. If you take this to court, I'll make life as miserable as possible for you. I'll even have someone post all of your pictures on the web. You pack and leave. Now he threatens me? He's going to post pictures and make my life miserable? Okay, I was prepared for that, too. The 50 50 split is off. He leaves with nothing. What pictures do you have, Paul? Where are they at? I don't see any pictures. I thought I told you. This man here is Max Cook, my private investigator. He has all of the evidence I need. I looked closely at Max Cook. The corners of his mouth were turning up into a smirk. He had patiently sat there and given us time to work things out. Now that we were past that, he looked like he was going to enjoy what was about to happen very much. I looked him right in the eyes and asked, Uncle Bob, what pictures is Paul talking about? Do you really have any pictures? Paul's head snapped from whatever it was he was looking at on the wall behind me and looked first at Max and then at me. Who in the hell is Uncle Bob? This is Max Cook, my investigator. Paul, let me introduce you to Robert Maxwell Cook, my mother's brother. He has always been Uncle Bob to me. He checked you out very carefully before we were married. He told me about all of your women, but I didn't care because I loved you. I was sure you would be faithful once we were married. He told me about your Thursday nights away from home, but I loved you. I thought you would eventually change. Uncle Bob has really helped me. He recommended one of his lawyer friends to you. You have no divorce papers. You are the dumb blonde around here. How do you think he managed to get in this house and change videotapes on Friday afternoons with me here? I would change them as soon as my lover left. That gave Uncle Bob more time to prepare them for you. I can assure you that the only pictures Uncle Bob has are of you and your married girlfriends. Oh yes, let's not forget your friend that owns the bar. That's where you stayed last night, and I can prove it. Uncle Bob wired the poker room and her bedroom over three years ago. I've got pictures of you and her, too. You must really be desperate for variety, because she's at least 20 years older than you are. Did you know that she has 4W working for her on the third floor above the bar? I should warn you that she has had more than 90 different lovers over the past three years. I'm very lucky that you didn't bring home some nasty disease from her. Thankfully, she makes her lovers use it. You have no idea of how many times I've gone to the clinic to have myself checked, just to be safe. That's how I found out about the SW Club. The doctor thought that I was the one sleeping with other men and cheating on you. I finally broke down and told him about you. That's when he made the offer for us to join the club. After talking with him, that's when I got the idea of finding out what it would be like to have it with other men. He helped me pick my partners and made arrangements for me to meet them and their wives. Now, pack your clothes and get out. I'll call a cab for you when you're ready to go. Like hell you will. I'm taking my truck, my motorcycle, and my boat. I'll make you sell the house and I'll get half of that. Paul, you've earned $48,000 per year for the three years we've been married. That's a total of $144,000. It was my money that made the down payment on this house. It is my money that has made most of the mortgage payments. I'm the one that paid for your truck, motorcycle, and boat. I've even had to buy most of the food we eat. Most of your money has gone to the Saturday night poker games in the back room of the bar. Why do you think that person that owns the bar was sleeping with you for free? The game is rigged. She has taken you for over $45,000 in the past three years. You not only gambled most of your paycheck away, you lost some of mine as well. My writing earned $32,000 the first year we were married. I earned over $48,000 the second year and almost $64,000 the third year. Two of my romance novels are in the bookstores right now. My third novel is being published this month. My freelance days are about over, but I'm still doing articles and short stories for several magazines. I tried several times to tell you how well I was doing with my writing, but you were never interested. All you would do is make fun of your dumb blonde wife that used wideout on the computer screen when she made a spelling error. We would have been bankrupt the first year if it hadn't been for your dumb blonde wife and her income. If you really want to go to court, that's fine with me. The husbands of your girlfriends will find out about you. Your gambling, the crooked card game, 
and the W house above the bar will all be made public. The police and the district attorney will love it. The husbands will beat you two within an inch of your life, and the bar owner will probably finish the job. Uncle Bob, hand him the divorce papers from my attorney, the ones in the brown envelope. Paul, those papers say that you get nothing. There is also a restraining order against you in there. Now pack your damn clothes and get out. It didn't take long for him to pack. Uncle Bob called a taxi, and Paul walked out of my life. He didn't even say goodbye. It tore me apart to see him go. I guess he was right all along. I was a dumb blonde. I really did love him, in spite of his faults.